Are you ready to talk about extreme task management for your real estate business? If you are, you're in the right place in this video. I'm going to walk you through exactly how I use Asana for task management in my real estate business. Stay tuned. And hey, if we haven't met yet, I'm Stephanie Lugo and welcome to this channel where I am obsessed with helping you explode your business and transform your life using the latest in social media strategies and business systems for your real estate business. If you're into that kind of thing, be sure to hit subscribe to this channel and don't forget to hit that bell notification icon to be notified every time I'm dropping new videos just like this. So today we are getting into a very highly requested video of mine. Steph, would you please share us how you use Asana? Yes, I'm more than happy to share with you exactly how I use Asana to stay on top of different task management items in my real estate business. And we've actually been using it for years. You can probably somewhere in the depths of YouTube find a video of me teaching a class on Asana at my brokerage from like years ago. So this is something that is tried and true in our real estate business, something that I help the agents in the Market Authority Academy learn as well. So I'm going to walk you through just a high level, exactly step by step how I'm using Asana for day to day processes and procedures in our real estate business. Okay, so number one, I love being able to manage my entire annual database marketing plan in Asana. Now, if you didn't know, in the Market Authority Academy, we actually work one-on-one -on -one to create your database marketing plan for an entire year or an entire quarter, depending on how much you wanna chew. But I think that using Asana to keep us on track with all the different tasks and ways that we want to show up to our database each year is like a match made in heaven. So let me walk you through exactly how I do that. But here you're looking at my Asana dashboard where I've created a project for database marketing. And what I do at this point is I actually tend to create this by the quarter. And right now, as I'm filming this, we're in Q2. To create a project, you just go to whatever team you're operating out of and you hit that little plus sign and create your project. And what I've done is I actually took it and saved it as a favorite. So right now it says remove from favorites, but if you save it as a favorite, it's going to have it right up here at the top, which is an awesome way to stay in front of where you need to be. So there's a couple of things that you can do to make this really easy and simple. And I'm always going to go for simple. You can get crazy in Asana and have it as built out as you want or as streamlined as you want. And I always go, go for like simple and streamlined because that is sustainable. So what I've done is I've created a bunch of these section headings for every month. And I also have one at the top for monthly recurring tasks. The reason for that is you don't want to like, again, make this more complicated than it has to be. I know that there are things that I'm going to do every month, like send out my monthly newsletter on the third Thursday. So you see here that my monthly newsletter I actually just send this out on MailChimp. It's super simple. I have it assigned to me so I can get reminders to my email. And then I'm always adding in the date that it's due so that I can kind of see at a glance what I'm working on each week. Um, you'll see that it repeats monthly. And after I complete this, I'm going to make sure that once it reassigns itself to this section, I'm going to go through and just make sure that I have it instead of on the 17th, that I have it on the proper Thursday. So I will always have to adjust that date just a little bit because I do want to make sure that it's always going out on the third Thursday. Um, I'm sure that there's a better way to do that, but that's just how I've always done it. And that's how I like it. We also have our birthday program. So we do that on the last Friday of each month for the following month. So that's actually coming up for us too. And then we have our individual tasks on each month. So you'll see again, as I mentioned, we're doing this by the quarter and here's what's really great to do. So when say it's January and you're, you're going through just some of these mailings that you have scheduled for the month after you've completed it, instead of closing out the task by hitting the check mark, how about you just reschedule it for yourself again the following year? How easy is that? So that way you're not kind of starting from scratch with your end of your business planning when you're creating your marketing for the following year. It's already there and all you have to do is when it gets a little closer, adjust the dates, adjust the details, and it's all done and ready for you. Now what I also really love about these is you can create subtasks. So say I'm looking at our quarterly magazine subtasks. You can add in as many things as you want here, right? So you can create a description for exactly what you want these to be. So for me, this might look like a winter 
quarterly magazine and I'll add some things that I want to include in here as well. And here's another idea. For example, I always send a letter, a letter of the heart to my database each quarter and I include it in my quarterly magazines. So I might assign myself a task to draft letter of the heart and I'll make sure that I'm getting this done a week before I actually want to send these out. And for that January, I would want to do it in December for a couple of weeks. So I'll make sure I give myself plenty of time to complete it. I'm going to assign this to me so there's no question in who's getting it done. And when it comes to December, months from now, I'm already going to have that task ready. Another thing I might do too is review photos because we do get a quarterly photo shoot and we use those photos with our family for marketing pieces just like this. So review fo photos from quarterly shoot and select images for the mag. And I might also do this in that same month, just making sure, especially since it's the holidays, that I'm giving myself as much time as possible. So I might even do that a week before. See, look at how easy and simple this can be. And over time, this will build and change and evolve, and that's perfect. It's never going to be perfectly done and complete because your marketing is going to change over time. But this is a great framework just to begin building certain things out so that you have an idea of what marketing costs you're going to have and also what you're going to need to prepare for as the year goes on. Super easy, right? I love using Asana for all of my t database task management, so I hope that that walkthrough is helpful. Now I wanna walk you through a little bit of how we keep our client workflow checklist too, right? So like imagine every time you get a new buyer or every time you get a new seller or every time you are getting ready for an open house or a listing appointment, right? These are all different segments of workflows and procedures that should be systemized. And then in order to keep them in front of you, instead of like writing this down with a pen and paper and hoping that you keep onto that little list in your desk, let's just throw it in Asana and then we can customize it and add due dates for each different task. Let me show you what I mean. So here's a really simple way to keep your client workflows in Asana. So you'll see over here on the, on the side, I have a bunch of these. I have buyer transaction checklist. I have listing transaction, listing appointment, two different things new listing checklist. I have all these different checklists. Now I created these once in Asana and then I saved it as a template. And here's how I'll do this. I'll just go ahead on the side and hit use template. And this is going to create a new duplicate for me. So what I might do is say one, two, three main buyer transaction checklist. I'm going to assign it to myself and I'm going to create, and this is going to create a brand new project. And what I can even do if I wanted to is save this to my favorites so it's always in front, but I actually really kind of keep this as open as possible. It's gonna take some time to migrate all of the different tasks over, but what I'm doing at this point is I'm going to schedule in whichever tasks I can. So for example, we usually have a pretty clear closing date here in Arizona, so I'm gonna make sure that I'm scheduling the closing gift that I wanna deliver and getting the closing at least in here as a due date. So I would maybe assign this to myself and add in whatever that closing date might be. Maybe it's 30 days from now or something. And then I'm just gonna go back and kind of recreate backwards as many dates as I can. So for example, the um, due diligence period is already pretty cut and dry. So I might say, well, that's gonna be 10 days from contract acceptance and make sure to put that in there as well and just go on down. And these are all the different steps that I know have to happen in a buyer transaction. Now, if you're in the Market Authority Academy, you actually get these included and I teach you how to utilize these and kind of adjust them to your own transaction, um, the way that things are done in your market. But go through a transaction, identify which emails you're sending every time, identifying the different tasks that have to happen to complete this transaction, for example, and after doing it a few times, create this template for yourself and then you can always have this ready to go. And what's great is when you are delegating to new team members or growing your team, delegation is super easy because you can just assign this to whoever you need to assign in that moment. All right, the third workflow that I use Asana for religiously is our content calendar, or as I like to kind of call it, our master editorial calendar. Right now, I manage two different YouTube channels, 
I manage um, a blog. I manage all kinds of different Facebook pages and lots and lots of different things because I'm just a glutton for punishment and I can't help but add more crazy social media content to our overall business strategy, whether I'm talking about our real estate team strategy or for the Market Authority Academy. So I've got a lot going on. However, when I'm working with my agents in the Market Authority Academy, they've got a lot on their plates too, just marketing their real estate business and being able to break down workflows for or the different platforms that they are posting on consistently is really helpful to create a more systemized plan. And then what's really cool is I teach them how to utilize Asana to delegate this because it's all about de delegation when it comes to systems, right? Like you really can't be successful in hiring on a new admin or a social media marketing manager or even a transaction coordinator if you don't have a set system to hand off. You don't have a procedure for them to just pick up and go with. And so this is how we use Asana to create a really fine-tuned master editorial calendar for your marketing and your real estate business. The way that I am kind of managing my content calendar, and I actually call this my master editorial calendar. I know that sounds super dorky. But again, I'm using a lot of the same format from what you've already seen, and I'm keeping it as simple as possible. So I manage two YouTube channels for our businesses, and I also have my own personal podcast where I'm sharing a lot of content like this. And so I always keep myself really in tune of what I need. I keep my um, email templates where they are pertinent um, right in front of me here. And then what I'm doing is basically breaking down the different pieces of content that I have coming up. And I only do this once a month. So once a month, which I'm actually doing tomorrow, I'm going to sit down and create all of the new YouTube videos um, that I have coming up. And so what I do here is I actually have created a little template for me. And let's go ahead and see what I've gotten here. So this is just like for the videos that you'll see on my YouTube channel. And I, again, make this super simple. I make sure that I have the subtasks all dialed in. So I want to make sure I'm filling in the details in the description, like the title and topic, the goals, any other relevant information. I fill out the custom fields for the stage, like the channel. And then I'm also setting the due date to the best estimate of when the content will be published. From there, I'm assigning this to me. This is just the first draft. Um, and there's a lot of this that I'm also delegating to um, other individuals. I'm just updating this because I'm seeing some of this is like a little, it needs to be cleaned up. Hello, Stephanie. Um, so I'm gonna go through and just make sure that this is looking all right. And as I create a new task, so say I'm going in to create a new video, I'm just gonna go ahead and duplicate. I'm going to pull just about everything in here, except for due date, except for collaborators and except for the assignee. And I might d date this something like, oh, let's see. I'll, I'll date this as 6-1-21, new video for YouTube. Um, I'm actually literally tomorrow getting ready to batch film all of my new content for um, the next month. And so I'm going to be creating brand new video titles just like this. So this is, again, it's going to import basically the, the same caption that I use for all of my YouTube videos, um, whether it's on the, U the Lugos, our real estate channel, or on my personal one where I talk about this stuff with you guys. Um, and then I have all my topic or all my subtasks that got pulled right over. And so what I'm going to go ahead and do is make sure that the due date for when it should be published is in here. And then I'm going to make sure that I first make sure that the title topic, other relevant goals are updated. So I'm going to assign this whole project to myself. Again, I'm going to set the due date for when I want it to be done. And I'm going to make sure that these content stages are good. So yes, it's in draft. All of this is all coming through just because I have it set as a template, right? So the in draft, the other thing is not drafted um, in review, ready to publish and published. So those are other things that I do. And then content type, primary content channel, all of that's there. I have my templated framework here that I use just for the description. I do the exact same thing for our real estate, our residential real estate YouTube channel. It's very, very similar, which you could see. Um, and then once I have these, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that I am assigning these different topics to me. So for me, I know that the day before I get ready to post this video, I need to have the caption and description nailed down and I'm going to assign that to myself. 
I am going to assign the thumbnail um, design to my lovely assistant and make sure that she gets that done the day before it posts as well so that we can get it all scheduled and ready to go. Um, and then once she also gets everything configured in my YouTube channel, I'm on the day prior, hopefully, um, I'm going to make sure that she is going to assign that to me as well. Um, and just make sure that it all looks good and hand it off. So I'll just assign that to myself for now. She's also going to go through and check all the links, make sure everything looks good. And then we're going to hit publish and ready to go. So a lot of times I'm not even filling out these dates until it gets closer. But that's for YouTube videos. What if you have something other, uh, something else that's just simple? So one thing that I have here is just my Instagram posting strategy. And I kind of update this once a month or so. And what I'm doing here is basically making sure that um, I have just a guide for what I'm going to be posting. And you can build this out as much as you want. Obviously, there are other things that you can follow to like um, later or Planoly, different systems that you can hire, or, you know, different apps or platforms you can sign up on that can auto post to Instagram. I actually do not do that. It's just not, I just, I prefer to post on the fly at this point, but I do want to make sure that I keep myself accountable for knowing how I'm going to post. So every week when I'm sitting in here, usually on Mondays and Fridays, I'm giving myself a start of the week and an end of the week recap to make sure everything got done during my admin hours. So I'm gonna go through and make sure, okay, I'm posting on my stories daily. And then I just know that every day I have to be showing up on the stories. Right now I wanna to post to the feed three times a week. Um, I wanna post reels two to three times a week. And then I have my monthly challenge item where I'm always kind of challenging myself to just mix it up a little bit. So I wanna create a great guide on Instagram guides this week as well. But say I wanted to get even more kind of dialed down or say there was something coming up that I definitely wanted to post about, like maybe a closing. So I'm not gonna change anything here, but what I might do is add a subtask and remind myself, post about COE for those awesome clients, right? Maybe I'll give them a name, <laughs> but I'll identify, okay, I know I have a closing coming up on this Thursday. I'm going to go and take a sold picture and I'm going to make sure that that's going to be my post for, for this week, um, for Thursday. So you can get in here and make this as dialed in as you want. But again, for me at this point, I'm kind of just posting on the fly a little bit because I have habitualized my posting system. It is a habit. It's just a part of my day. It's just something I do. If this started slipping through the cracks, you know I'd get really granular about different things that I'm going to be posting. You know I'd be planning it out more and you know I would be looping in people to help me out. So if you're struggling with accountability here, you might find a friend or an accountability partner who is going to follow up with you every week and say, awesome, you were going to have these different posts to the feed. Did you get those done? And you're going to say yes or no. But that being that way, you can at least have an accountability partner. And I believe even with a free account on Asana, you can delegate some of these as well. So always feel free to loop in your accountability partner, assign these different tasks to them as well so that it's in front of them and vice versa so that you guys can kind of collaborate in the way that you're going to post and make sure that you're showing up when you say you're going to show up. Cool, right? And then finally, I use Asana for delegation either to myself or others. Let me talk you through that a little bit. Number one, I need a place just to dump a lot of those one-off tasks that are just floating around in my mind. I need to get them out somewhere and make sure that I am not going to forget like those random one-off things that I know are important, but I just can't get done right in the moment. So a lot of times I'm using Asana in that way just to create a mind dump. And then sometimes I'm also creating other sub lists that I can delegate either to an admin assistant or a marketing manager in order for them to know exactly what to take off my plate and get done, especially if it's something urgent or important. This is how I do that. There's a lot of things that you can do here, right? Um, if we're looking at your database marketing plan or even your power hours or even your master editorial calendar or your admin tasks that you're doing every week, whatever you have, you can very simply just add on other people in your team to help you accomplish different things. And then what's so great about this is how easy it is to build out additional subtasks. So for example, for our birthday program, we have this so oiled in that Bryce and I just kind of tackle it and, and we do it a little bit on the fly, even though like our systems are so kind of 
together that it's not on the fly. We just, we just know what to do. It's habitualized at this point. But if I were to, at this point, bring on say a marketing assistant or somebody to help us with these and take this off our plate, it would be as simple as Bryce or myself owning that task and then adding additional subtasks that you could then delegate. So for example, this might be compile the list of birthdays for the month. And that would be something super simple to delegate to an individual on your team or whoever's supporting you to at least get that done. So then you can maybe have that list ready to order those gifts for, or you can then break down additional subtasks that kind of break open the entire process so that you're not doing the entire project alone. And the other kind of delegation that I think is really interesting as well is just the accountability aspect that I kind of mentioned earlier. So one thing that I want you to consider, if you are feeling a little isolated in real estate and if you are lacking that support and the camaraderie that, that you would like to have in real estate, you should absolutely find yourself an awesome accountability partner and include them in some of these things as well. So what you might do is create a, um, create a new blank project and invite people. Um, this is how you invite people, by the way, you can invite people, but once you invite people to your team, they have access to most of these. So you do want to make sure that when you do this, you're not going to have anything sensitive, like client information that you don't just want out there, but your accountability partner be, should be somebody that you trust anyways. But think about creating a blank project, go through the motions with all of these things that you can do. So maybe this looks like accountability. You can set your privacy here so you can have it private to project members, like specifically the people that you're inviting, which is exactly what you would want. You can either do a timeline, a calendar or a board. Um, so let's say you wanted to create a board. I don't use these too often because I just really like the list format, but you know, let's try it out and see. Um, you can have custom fields. So this would be a great one to have priority and status would be really great fields to have. Are you on track with this thing that you want to accomplish or are you off track? Is it at risk? And then you can go through and have all of these really awesome different, different tasks or board tiles in here that kind of pertain to the different things that you're wanting to do. So for example, social media, right? This is one that really requires a lot of inner and outer accountability to stay on top of for a lot of agents. And if you struggle with that, you are totally not alone. We're always working in the Market Authority Academy to learn how to build an accountability and, and systemize social media marketing so that we don't let it fall off the off of the track, so to speak. So say you want to make sure that this week, um, you're going to do your Instagram posts three per week. And I think that's a really good target for any real estate agent. So you might assign it to yourself and say that you also want to have your accountability partner in here. You would then just make sure that you have whatever subtasks you need um, assigned to them. So maybe they're going to double check. So accountability partner to check in midweek, right? That might be a really great way. So you would have that um, check in midweek whenever it needs to be. You can assign it to that accountability partner. So maybe it's holla at the Lugos. Do not email me there. <laughs> and then you can have your collaborators too. So you can bring in those, those that accountability aspect too and have them collaborate on this task. So specifically, you guys are gonna create your own check-ins. You're going to make sure that you're keeping each other on track or on track rather. And that's a really great way to just make sure that you are delegating not only work, but accountability because we can't do this alone. So I hope that this made sense. And if you have any questions about this specific aspect, let me know. This is kind of an idea I've been working on in the Market Authority Academy. And I'm actually really excited to bring this to my agents in there and teach them how to utilize this to a higher level to create better and more incredible results for their business. What do you think? Are you super excited to use Asana? Because for me, it has been a game changer in my business. So definitely check it out. And by the way, I do have an Asana affiliate account. How cool is that? Check that out below if you wanna save a little bit of money and use one of the upgraded accounts with Asana, which I have used for years and love. And you'll find all the details in Asana and find the right account for your business there too. So that's linked below. And if you want some help one-on-one -on -one in order to really dial this in for your business and 
properly from the ground up, systemize your real estate business to take you to six figures and beyond, then we should talk. Book a time, a totally free consultation where we will chat about working together in the Market Authority Academy and see how we can get you to where you want to be. That is also linked below along with all the other resources that I mentioned in this video. So check out the caption where you'll have everything that you need. I really hope that you found this helpful. I had a lot of fun making this video for you because this is one of my favorite topics. So if you have any more questions or if you would like me to dive deeper in any of the topics discussed in this video, be sure to leave a comment below and I would love to chat further with you there. Thanks again for tuning in and until next time, keep on crushing it.